Hello, everybody. My name is Laurent Brochard. I'm an intensivist working at the University of Toronto in Canada. And I'm pleased to discuss with you the question of uh, measuring alveolar recruitment in patients with ARDS and try to briefly see together why and how to assess recruitment. Our laboratory has been working with a number of uh, companies for research grant or mostly for receiving equipment they are listed here. I'd like to start maybe with the COVID-19 respiratory distress syndrome that some people call the CARDS. Um, just to illustrate the very uh, complicated debates that patients, uh, people had about uh, these patients. And this is an example, for instance, of a nice uh, series of recommendations made by John Marini and Luciano Gattinoni on how to manage these patients. And the issue of how to set the PEEP and uh, how to assess the recruitment has been really central in these discussions. However, I would say that uh, these patients, uh, yes, we are special. You need clearly to protect uh, yourself and the environment about spreading the virus. But mostly this is ARDS. And this is the same question that we had with ARDS, which is how to measure recruitment and how to best set the PEEP. So the most spectacular technique to measure or to visualize recruitment is the CT scan. It's a complicated technique, which unfortunately cannot be used at the bedside. But you have here a very nice example of two patients from the series uh, published by Luciano Gattinoni. On the left, you have a patient who is not recruiter, sorry, who is at uh, five and 45 centimeters of water presenting exactly the same density. So it did not reopen under high pressure. The patient is not recruiter. But on the right side, you see that a lot of the density, which means the non-aerated part of the lung, has reopened under high pressure, 45. So in the first patients, first patients, any increase in PEEP will be harmful and, and completely useless. And when I say harmful, maybe if you look at the size of the, the, the heart, you see how the heart is squeezed with the high pressure. Whereas the other patient, the high pressure was very useful to reopen the lung, which may be very, maybe very important to avoid repeated opening and collapse of the lung. So we need to know which patients are recruiter, which patients are not recruiter. As I say, the CT scan is not available. There is one technique which does not give the same information, but which gives some functional information about where the ventilation is distributed. And this is the electrical impedance tomography. So this is an exciting technique. Uh, you have here different uh, imaging of patients with different PEEP levels, different position, with or without a prone, for instance. And you see mostly uh, the distribution into the upper part and the lower part, which means how much of the ventilation is going mostly in the upper part or the lower part, or we say the non-dependent part or the dependent part. And uh, you see very well when you are at the bedside what the PEEP is doing and the PEEP, um, the distribution of ventilation changing with PEEP. However, it does not exactly tell you when it's recruitment or not, so you need to do calculation. And I took an example of a recent study in COVID patients where from the change in local compliance of each peak cell, you can calculate whether the compliance uh, increases, which is called recruitment, so it decreases in collapse, or when the compliance decreases, which means hyperinflation. 
And the, uh, this is an example of a series of patients where you see with the blue curve, the progressive increase in over distension. So drop in compliance and increase the peak. And the progressive decrease in collapse because the compliance is uh, increasing in, in these peak cells. And you can see which peak level uh, give you uh, the maybe the best result. So in this study, the authors decided that they wanted to have less than 10% of relative collapse, which may be a bit arbitrary. Uh, but uh, doing that, well, they, they reach relatively high PIP. Uh, you see on the right that their PIP level were, well, even higher than the, those recommended by the alveoli high PIP FIO2 table. Um, I say it's a bit arbitrary because uh, at the same time, of course, you still have a substantial amount of hyperdistension, maybe more than 10%. So we, we are not sure what's the best technique. One thing we proposed was to look at the distribution between the non-dependent part and the, the dependent part. This is an example of patients in whom we increase the PEEP, so you see a better distribution with more homogeneous ventilation. The next day, with the same PIP, most of the ventilation was now in the dependent part. And the only explanation for that is that we were overstanding the non dependent part. So we say when you see that, this is an incentive to decrease the PIP. Uh, and interestingly, in this series, uh, we found that the best compliance was different from a 50% distribution of ventilation, as I showed you. Uh, as you see, the best compliance would result in much higher PEEP level, and that's one of the reasons why we don't use compliance at the bedside. So we don't use compliance, but we use uh, a formula which is based on the regional compliance. Let me explain to you. This is a paper we published with uh, Lucien and co-workers validating a bedside method, which we call the potential for lung recruitment, estimated by the recruitment to inflation ratio. You can find this method very easily on our website, on our blog, and there is video to, to show how to do it. Uh, very briefly, the principle, if we go back to this recruitable lung, is to try to measure the distribution of volume into the green part, which is the recruitable, the, sorry, the open lung at the at baseline. So this is a baby lung. And the yellow part, which is the recruitable lung. The red part is, of course, the part which is not recruitable. And for that, we do a very simple maneuver, which is a ventilation with volume control where we drop the PIP from 15 to 5 in one breath, so the delta pressure is 10, and we measure the exhaled volume at the next uh, uh, um, volume expiration. And we can predict what should have been the, the exhaled volume if there is no recruitment, because it's based on the compliance at low PIP. And every time we see a difference between this predicted volume and the total exhaled volume, we say this is recruited volume. So based on that, we can estimate what is the compliance of the baby lung. So this is a green part, if you want. This is uh, based on the compliance at low PIP. And what we call the compliance of the recruited lung, which is the delta volume by the delta pressure, which in our example was a PIP delta PIP of 10. And we have used this technique even in the COVID-19 patients with colleagues from China in Wuhan during the pandemics. Here an example of the values of the recruitment to inflation ratio. And you have on the top patients who were not submitted to prone position. On the bottom patients who were submitted to the prone position. Uh, we define a recruitment to inflation ratio higher than 0.5 as indicating recruitment. And it was interesting to see that many patients who went into the prone position were initially non-recruiters, but became recruitable after the prone position. 
it may be an additional benefit of own position. So this technique is feasible. Uh, it's not, uh, you don't need any sophisticated equipment. You can do it on any ventilator. And it can tell you whether the patient should receive a high beep or should receive a low beep. So uh, we, is this different in ARDS with COVID or non-COVID? This is a study which was just accepted in critical care. Uh, using patients from Rome and for our from a center in Toronto. And just to make a long story short, if you look at the right um, bottom corner, you see the recruitment to inflation ratio in COVID ARDS and non-COVID ARDS. And you see on average, there is no difference. Uh, if anything, maybe the COVID patients were slightly more recruitable, but you see that there's a whole range of value from completely non-recruitable to very highly recruitable. So the message is that you need to individualize to every patient. And this is why we are starting a randomized called trial called careful ventilation in ARDS, the caviar trial, because we want to know if this technique applied individually will increase the outcome. Please don't hesitate to contact us for more information. Thank you very much.